Cool. Um, welcome, everybody, to the first work group meeting of uh, 2021. I uh, hope everybody had a nice nice break and a little bit of time off and are recharged and ready to uh, make 2021 awesome. Um, so we've got some demo and uh, I've got a bunch of stuff to talk about today. Um, I posted a link to the meeting notes in the chat. If anybody needs again, I can post it again, but it's the same same notes doc that we've been using. So just add yourself to the top. If there's anything that you'd like to talk about on the, um, just add yourself to the, to the agenda. Uh, and I'm sorry, I have a camera on one side and the incoming video on the other. So I, I am I am looking at you guys. Um, uh, okay, so first thing. Um, so a couple weeks ago, uh, uh, Luigi was, was kind enough to, <clears throat> to volunteer to, to help kind of get a, I don't know what we're going to call it, a, a, a POC or an MVP or just a V like 0.9 um, of a dashboard out. So I tried to absorb a lot of the the comments in the different docs and requirements specs and all of this. And one of the, one of the realizations that that I had was uh, it would be better to get something out than getting the perfect thing out a very long time from now. So I feel like we we weren't making a ton of progress, or I wasn't making a ton of progress on the the implementation. It just got too complex and. Um, we had a, uh, a short meeting. We, di we didn't really have quorum, but it, but a comment came up in I think it was early November, which was which was basically like this is way too complicated. Can we just like throw Grafana on a database and, and call it a day? And that got me thinking, and that wasn't a terrible idea. So um, that's the demo I'm going to show. So um, this is Grafana um, on a VM um running well a couple different things so let me let me do the demo -y thing and then i'll explain what, what you're actually seeing um this is actually wrong let's just fix that uh um okay so these Cards down here come from the David your stuff, um, the, the 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 best practices badge uh, data. These things over here come from the scorecard, uh, Dan your stuff, um, the, sc the sc scorecard metrics. Um, the project overview I believe comes from the uh, the, be the best practices. Um, although some of these links down here are generated dynamically. Project releases over time um, come from the libraries.io um, API, which gives a list of versions and dates, so you can you can graph it. Um, months since last release and average months to re average months between releases uh, comes from uh, GitHub, I believe. Uh, no, this libraries.io. Contributors within the past 90 days is broken on this one, but it should say, you know, the number of distinct contributors to the Git repo. So it does a clone and then it parses the log um, looking for this. Uh, and then percentage of issues open. This is the last 100 issues that were created. How many of them are currently uh, open? And then what's the average duration between open and closed for those 100? So these are not intended to be perfect metrics because no metrics are perfect, um, but they're intended to give something. And then I think what I'm what I'm hoping is that we have a a fruitful you know argument about like well 90 days is is a terrible number and a year is like just barely enough, but it really should be like one year and three years or like average issue duration doesn't mean anything. It really should be this other thing. But at least we have something to like point at and, and, and laugh at and say that it should be this other thing instead. Um, these things on the bottom, um, there's, a, there's a job that goes out and gathers everything from OpenSSF, uh, from the best practices and all of the public um, data that the scorecard project creates, which is awesome. So thank you for um, both of you for, for having those, those kind of APIs and data available. It's a lot easier than um, well, open the best practice, I wouldn't have any other way of doing it, but 
the, the scorecard metrics, it's it's a little painful in terms of uh, API limits to generate these things um, in ourself. So what I have is, um, you know, if you want to look at like left, my, my, my favorite left pad, um, you know, left pad comes in and we have more data, you know, coming in, but left pad, you know, is, is you know, it's been deprecated since I think 2018. So we expect to see numbers like this. There is no badge stuff. Uh, I ran the scorecard independently on it and some of them popped up yes and most no. Um, so it has this, but it has this other section, security reviews, which I want to talk about um, in a little, in, in a minute. Um, are there any questions about the demo so far? Um, I'm going to get a little bit more into the architecture and then go to the security reviews uh, and then have more of a holistic discussion on like, is this the right, are we going down the right road? Uh, David, you're on mute. Thank you. Uh, I, uh, the 2020 phrase is going to be 2021 is all also, I, I see. Uh, thank you. Um, I, I would definitely love to have all the arguments about the metrics. I think there are better. I, I'm not very excited about release versus, say, some you know number of commits or something. But I, I I love this overall approach of getting something up, and then you know, and, and then we can have reasonable, interesting arguments about what to put there. Right. <laughs> so yep. I, I I'm actually very excited. I think this looks uh, this is looks uh, really really promising. Uh, I am curious where you got the security reviews text there. Ah, uh, give me about 10 minutes and all, all, all your questions will be answered. Ah, <laughs> yeah, so I'll, I'll just quick, quickly put a peg in the, uh, you know, for the, the health and so on. Uh, the number, the length of time between releases, um, you know, different projects have very different views on that. But if, I think if you pr produce at least, you know, how many commits per month? That at least gives, you know, in particular, I, there are no commits this month tells me something very, very different, even if there hasn't been a release in in a year. True. I, I, I think maybe we need both because from a consumer, I don't consume commits. I only consume a release. So if I know that the last, like you, you do releases every three years and you just had one three months ago, I should know not to expect another release for another couple of years. Um, but yeah, I agree that the number of commits is is important. And, and what I was hoping for is that some of these guys on the bottom are proxies for that kind of information. So I, I haven't looked into precisely what like the a, what would it take to go from an X to a check on contributors. Um, but I would imagine it would be something along those lines, like have had more than X contributors in the past yeah. T. Well, for some of these, uh, do you need an X? Can you give it a score or a number? Uh, correct. I tried to make these ones on the bottom all binary, uh, aside from these guys over here. So these are either like, I actually, some of these have partial because you have partial in some of your data. So, right. or, or partially met or something like that. Yeah, um, I, I suspect you're going to, if you can make it binary, that's awesome. I, I suspect you're not going to get away with it. <laughs> right. Which which is this whole thing, and the other nice thing is that each of these can be links out to other more uh, uh, lower level dashboards that have like more of the raw information. Right. Uh, and the, I'm just curious on the open SSF scorecard metrics. Are those? I, I didn't remember, but it's been a couple of weeks since I looked at the scorecard. Uh, is that? Is the scorecard actually pulling the um, number of contributors and that kind of stuff? I I didn't think that that was part of their test. There's two relevant things here. There's like a, a one check to try to determine whether or not the project is active, and that one has a couple different things it looks at, like whether any kind anything has happened in the last. 90 days or something like that. And then there's another one that tries to make sure there's at least more than one contributor. So we don't care about the actual number as long as it's greater than one. Okay, so there's some overlap in these between yeah. the best practices and the scorecard, um, I think. Um, are, are you doing similar kinds of, does the, does the best practices have like 
I know best practices might be self-reported, but I think you also are covering code review, CI tests. Um, yeah, so uh, I have a yes, question I'll, regarding, I'll, I'll go ahead, Dave. Yeah, yes, although, you know, there, there are some challenges and differences. So, for example, uh, for the multiple contributors, what we want is multiple contributors from different organizations. Uh, whereas with, it, with the number of contributors, it's just straight, are there more than one? And so, all right. No, it, for us, it actually is organizations for the scorecards too. We copied that. Now I remember. Yeah, I, I although I am a little skeptical of how well you'll be able to do that because two people can have two different email addresses from two different places, and they're actually at the same company. Happens yeah, all the time. It uses <laughs> the GitHub organization field where people can kind of self-identify what organization they're with, not the email address. But yeah, there are still challenges there too, like. People type Google or Google Inc. and those show up as like two different things sometimes. Uh, I have a question regarding the OpenSSF batch. Um, so this is filled out through a form, right? Like since we cannot validate maybe these metrics, does it make sense to show it here rather than just the batch? Because ideally we would want to validate the metrics, right? Let's say somebody says two-factor authentication is enabled. like. Do we validate all these metrics? Uh, we don't validate all of them. We validate, uh, uh, of course, uh, let's actually, let's step back. What do you mean by validate? Okay. Um, some of them are automatically checked and they, they are verified as being correct, or um, some of them are at least verified as being consistent with other data. Well, no, some data is self-reported, some is not. <laughs> There's the yes, so. Uh, whereas, uh, so some data is self-reported, some is um, validated uh, in terms of an automatic check, and some is validated for at least, you know, consistency. In other words, um, yes, that is. There are reasons to believe that's true. Uh, there is also the prop, the challenge if someone lies, um, it's all public, so it can be um, uh, questioned and, if necessary, overridden. We've done that in several cases where somebody makes false claims. And it's reported, and it's either fixed or the or the deleted, and the the uh, user is removed. If we have to it, do that, is there, is there a periodic like, hey, is this still true? Um, there we have talked about that many times. There's a little bit of that, um, but uh, we'd like to do more in the future. Okay. Um, but. Uh, Right to be honest, right now it, it's a matter of priority. Yeah. Right now, we've been more focused on just getting people to do things at all because that's the higher risk. People backsliding a little bit is not ideal, but for a lot of these things, once you set up things like CI pipelines, your your pipeline's going to enforce it on yourself, and you're doing it. So right. we're way more worried about the projects that aren't even trying. Cool. Uh, any other? Yeah, I'll just say I agree with David. It's you know it's great to have something here, and we can you know and we can keep refining. But um, it, you know it, it's a starting point. Um, so thanks for your yeah, work. I, I have a, a, a next steps question, which is you know you currently have a Docker um, image that's great. I would love to see metrics.opensf.org. <laughs> nice, nice, thank you. And there it is. Yeah, um, I, so actually, I'm sorry. And there it is, huh? The, the readme that's on the site is, I, I did not update that, that points to the old uh, thing. It is currently a, well, I'll talk about the architecture, I guess, okay. now. Yeah. Um, architecture was meant to be super simple. Um, there is one database, and there is one table and it's called metrics. And the columns are like, it's package URL, you get a key and you get a value. And you get some other properties where, where it's not, where it doesn't, doesn't quite work. Um, so these things look like, uh, and it's just post, it's vanilla Postgres, nothing special. Um, so core infrastructure badge thing, the key is like, you know, where it came from and the license is MIT. And that's it. Um, 
then back here, when I'm curious as to like, well, what, what does this mean? It, it just means that the query is just for the given package URL, what's the value of the key? And then there's some mashing to keep Grafana happy, but it, it's nothing special there. So there's no like weird complex backend whatchamabobs to, to kind of keep things going. You just have a refresh job. Um, and the refresh job is the thing that is here now. Um, and basically that comes down to, oops, not that one. Uh, a couple different scripts. One of them is like, check the scorecard. And the scorecard means um, that either I'm going to grab the the latest JSON with everything in it and parse them all, or if you give me just one, I will go there and I will try to find the um, the GitHub repo and then run the scorecard thing myself on it. Um, Actually, that one it does run in a in a container. That was just Michael. Uh, Go ahead, Luigi. Uh, I have a question. Uh, how uh, you you handled the, the GitHub limits? Because uh, when I I was uh, uh, written the the code, I have uh, some troubles with the uh, GitHub mm -hmm. API limits because, uh, of course. Uh, to, to test uh, the code, uh, I need to run it uh, um, several times. And uh, mm, of course, uh, uh, after uh, some attempts, uh, I was blocked by GitHub. Yeah, um, I, I don't have a good answer for that. Um, I don't think, well, I think we should have, have a talk with GitHub to see what, what are the chances of getting a higher API limit. Uh, I know other orgs do, you know, they have a pool of tokens, which kind of, it's not probably the right thing to do either. Um, we could run it slowly. We could, you know, but but like the um, the scorecard itself takes. I mean, I've seen it take over a thousand out, out of the five thousand API points. Um, not really. I, I think it just takes around less than a hundred. So you can do like around fifty to hundred repos. But here is the thing: we are doing kind of a hack to. Uh, switch between tokens. So I think uh, uh, that's like a hack around the GitHub token limits. Like okay. you can have multiple tokens and you oh, keep okay. changing them. But it has been a crazy pain. Like we need to solve that thing. Yeah. So yeah. I, actually, for that, because um, what I know, so when I was, um, as I was doing other things for for with with, with the GitHub token. Um, I realized that if I just switched over and learned GraphQL better, I could get, you know, going down from hundreds to like one token point, um, where it's just significantly. And and I noticed that there was some code in the scorecard that does GraphQL, um, but I'm wondering if the rest of it might might make that more a lot more efficient. Yeah, there's probably some optimizations that can be done. I know it's like the GraphQL API rate limiting changes completely. Like it's not one token per request. They have some way where like it's smart enough to charge you based on how big the query is. So there probably is uh, okay. some tweaking that could be done. But it, yeah, when I first looked at it, it was hard to actually predict just because yeah, of yeah. Like, the, the math. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> there's a, there's oh, hard to design the checks as well. Like so right now the checks are all different. Like if you use GraphQL, you have to combine all the queries together uh, and combine the checks. So it makes uh, the refactoring and other stuff hard. So we can look into it, but it's hard. Cool. Yeah, Michael, there's another approach you can take, which is radically different. Hold up. Bah. Um, and that is something more like what the best practices badge does, which is instead of trying to do a batch, and to be fair, the badge really couldn't do the, the what you're doing right now anyway. Um, but you could make it so that people log in and use their tokens because they're interested. You know, I really yeah. know want to know about Project X. Well, Project X isn't on the uh, the, the list that you currently do on a on a normal cycle. Fine. You log in, we'll use your token, we'll give you answers. And oh, by the way, 
we'll store that data in the database with a date and then everybody else can get that data. I, I think that totally makes sense. Um, especially if we are, I guess if it's a real OAuth app thing where we are doing the validation on our end using their token that they have just given us or with the OAuth dance gotten us access to rather than they actually run any code because I, I would be concerned with just what that would imply. I, I'm sorry, I, I, I didn't understand I, that last I, I, I wouldn't want to just give out the code and say, hey, here, um, run this code yourself on your desktop against your thing and submit the data to us. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm saying, you know, you know metrics.opensf.org, you show up, Oh, you want you want to look at this other project? Give me the URL of the project. You you log in. Give me the URL of the project. Run the scorecard. Do the, ask CI best practices, whatever else, and then you get the data. You show the user results, and then you store it with a date. I, I think with that model, though, you got to make sure you store the date of the analysis and show yeah. that because you know it might you know. The next person who wants to know, they might it might be okay with month old data, but yeah, you know, yeah. but everything you gets time tell them it's month old anyway. data. Um, uh, I'm not sure if this is a good time to to make this, but I'll but I'll you know I'll say it and then we can store it if we need to. So there's a scenario that I'm very interested in, which is the um, gating of the use of open source software um, based on security parameters. Um, so I'm, uh, you know, I, I'm interested in, there's a project that I've been working a bunch with, which is the Intoto project. And so, and they focus on, you know, secure supply chain framework. Um, I think it would be very interesting if we could have the results from this come out in in Toto um, link format um, and be signed, you know, and also identify who, you know like who ran the check and um, and then we could you know uh, use that also for um, companies who want to validate they can validate against that so. Yep. So yeah. automate and validate. Yeah, and again, I think it'd be key to make sure we include date of analysis, right? In export right. For, for for all the same reasons. Yeah, yep. Yeah. I have some doubts about uh, uh, this strategy about uh, GitHub token limits because, uh, um, of course, uh, the user can run uh, using uh, their token uh, one, two, three scans. But uh, they can uh, uh, use uh, with many tools in in some hours because the limits uh, block you for one hour or more. I don't know. And so I don't know if it is the best user experience uh, if you can uh, if you want uh, to compare different tool uh, and so you can you want uh, to run the dashboard uh, in real time uh, different times. Uh, uh, in addition, uh, I think that uh, uh, scorecard uh, works only with uh, GitHub and it is okay. But uh, if a project is uh, on GitLab, uh, we can uh, we cannot use it. So I don't know, or maybe I'm wrong. Uh, and, but uh, when I have tested uh, uh, the scorecard with GitLab, I cannot run it. But uh, maybe I can. Maybe I. I, uh, I am wrong or something, so I don't know, but. Yeah, Dan should comment, but I think they they started with GitHub, but are interested okay. in expanding to other um, SEMs, not SEMs, but, um, no, right, uh, SEMs. Oh, we, um, yep. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Dan, do you wanna? Oh. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, you summed it up correctly. Um, it's just a matter of doing the work to query the GitLab APIs. Yeah, and for and for 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 my end of it, wherever I can, I go to libraries at I/O, which gets me whatever it, it's like twelve or fifteen different ecosystems. Um, so I'm kind of I'm I'm relatively agnostic to it. I just won't have I'll, I'll have you know missing data here for the places where where I'm not querying yet. 
Uh, and a lot of these say no data here in the middle because I haven't run the script because of the API limits and there's no sense in you know burning CPU time on a proof of concept for all these. Um, okay, um, I did want to get to the security of use part um, quickly, if that's unless anybody has anything burning that they need to talk about right right this second. Okay, just one more thought. Yeah. Sorry, I wonder if we could get um, GitHub to provide data, so the kinds of data that we're interested for security in a kind of a cold storage or something, so that we wouldn't have to. Um, I don't know, it just seems like something to talk to them about. So we wouldn't have to use their API to query. Maybe they've got some other place where we can go, you know, get relatively fresh data across a bunch of projects. So that would be that, particularly, I think, because, you know, in, in anything, you know, th there's this like hockey tail graph of like projects that anybody has ever used. So if you just focus to the things that, like we would probably care about anyway. It's not be a very small portion of the total number of GitHub projects. Um, that'd be interesting to just talk to um, Maya uh, about. Right. Are, are are you talking about like BigQuery? Uh, yeah, I, I'm not sure exactly how it would look. I'm just trying to come up with you know some way where you know another way where we could get around their API limits and. I thought perhaps that way you might be having some data stored on the side that's, you know, so that we're not querying against their, you know, their main databases. So Abhishek actually found, and actually I think somebody might have sent it to Abhishek, but there's this old project called GitHub Torrent. I don't know if anybody here is aware of that. Yeah. Oh, that, is of great, that is a great resource, but except that it's dead. <laughs> yeah, that's the problem. Um, it seems like Microsoft was sponsoring it at some point. There was only like one maintainer of it, but that's basically what it did. People were kind of donating access tokens to it, and they were scraping and sticking things into offline cold storage and then making them available to researchers. Ah. Um, why, did, why did it die? Were there Michael Dunham things? The data wasn't solid or there wasn't resourcing or the person who was leading the project decided to do something else? Yeah, I don't, I never got the answer on exactly what happened with it. Um, the person responded to emails. We sent a couple questions, but yeah, it seems like they just stopped running the thing that they were running and I don't know why. Microsoft's listed as a sponsor there. I don't know who from Microsoft was helping out with it, though. I, no, I think it's, I think I could talk to Stormy Peters about that. I think she would. Yeah, she would uh, uh, Unless Michael and uh, Jeff Wilcox were, were both involved. So okay. they, they, they at least know the answers, whether or not they were, I don't think they were doing the work, but. Right. Yeah. Um, but the data sets, yeah, I mean, that this is. Um, uh, yeah, they were publishing whole MySQL backups you could download and then also like interactive access to it. And I think somebody even had a mirror going into BigQuery at some point too, but it hasn't been updated in about a year or I guess a year and a half now. Yeah, as far as I know, BigQuery still exists, but the, but uh, I mean, it's not, I don't think that's free at all. Uh, as you get bigger, you get charged for it. So I don't think that's really going to be a help for scale in this kind of thing if you want the general public be able to query to it. No, but if we could, if we could query to it, and I, you know, somehow figure out the billing part of that, um, that might be more efficient. If, if it's yeah, right. yeah, I could take care of the big query costs on the Google side if we could get the data in there and get that fresh. Mm -hmm. So let's add that as another. I'm, saying, I, I'm a big fan to distribute the cost out to the person who wants the answers. So, <laughs> yeah, use your uh, we'll, we'll use your token if you want the answer. <laughs> yeah, it just makes it a little harder for someone to um, to, to query. And there's an extra step, like you have to provide your token. But yeah. anyway, also it gets it's lower when you add more checks. So right now it takes around 15 to 20 seconds, and we keep adding more checks. So. It won't be a real time experience to get that information. Yeah. To, to get which information? Uh, like all the metrics, right? So right now we have like 10 checks, right? And it takes around, let's say 15 to 20 seconds. So if someone goes to a web page, it will take some time. So it, it won't look like real time data uh, is fast enough. 
Mm-hmm. You know, I, I I usually don't make decisions to uh, use some piece of software in 15 seconds. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I figure I can wait 15 seconds for somebody else to work hard to get the answer for me. I, I okay. might even be willing to wait several minutes. <laughs> You're so patient. (laughs) (laughs) It's a virtue. (laughs) At least that's what I keep telling myself. (laughs) And also, these are all. um, I'd I'd love to hear your. These are all things we can. I mean, you know, I'm noting them, and it's you know good for discussion. But I'm interested to you know go on, Michael, and have you talk about the. um, Okay. So 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 when uh, I guess OSSC the, the the GitHub. Coalition um, started. One of the, the the drivers, at least for me, in this was um, so part part of what my team does at at Microsoft is uh, security reviews of open source. So we we look at a thing and we give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. We, we use tools. We do code review. We do all sorts of stuff. Um, and so what, when we give it a thumbs down, that's usually either because it's just an inherently non-secure thing. It's like it the only its entire purpose is implementing MD5. So we're not going to approve that. Um, on, in other cases, is a vulnerability, in which case we take it through that process and get it get it fixed. Um, and in a lot of cases, it's fine. And when it's fine, we give it a thumbs up, which is I think a little bit different than what other things existing processes are out there uh, because I've never really seen a good like thumbs up on security. Like someone has actually looked at it with their eyeballs and said, this looks fine. Um, that's part one. Part two is that we've done, you know, hundreds and hundreds of these over the past couple of years and we're just kind of sitting on the data. And if any of your organizations are doing anything similar, we're probably looking at the same thing, which means that we are, collectively wasting like 90% of our effort. Um, wouldn't it be great if there was a community resource that we could all publish to and consume from and uh, get interesting data, not zero days, so this is not a zero day trading club, um, but interesting security data about projects that aren't coming from the projects themselves. So like Apache has a security page and Mongo has a security page and, th- and those are great. Um, but those are also the, you know, self-attested, like I am secure because I say I'm secure, um, for the big projects, there's trust there and that's fine for the smaller projects. They, they don't have those things anyway. Um, and wouldn't it be great to have, you know, just information that someone has looked at left pad and said, you know what looks fine. Um, and so, so that was kind of the. One of the things that drew me to to OSSC was was this, and I've been hoping to get this out. Um, and so I'd like to kind of you know, start moving on this. Uh, and basically, so what this is is uh, it's just it's meant to be super simple. Um, it is a markdown document that has text. It has a couple different fields that you have to do. Otherwise, the CI will will complain. Um, and it has a little bit of structure at the top which is what things does it apply to? Um, when did I do my review? Who did it? What my recommendation was? And this is like safe, unsafe, or like it depends. Um, and hopefully there aren't, hopefully there are more like things not in the it depends because that doesn't help too much. Um, and then, so so this data just gets sucked into here and becomes this. So, so this is, uh, it's a clone and a, parse and a upload to the database so it's so it's quick but it's um it's all sourced from from here um so what i would like to do and i don't think that the two projects need to go out at exactly the same time but um you know as i said you know we have you know hundreds and hundreds of these that we would like to make public uh and going forward we would like our our the ones that as we do them uh, especially the ones that aren't uh sensitive, I guess, um, we just immediately make public. Um, I think that that helps us scale, that helps everybody else. If you guys are doing it, it will help you scale. Um, There's still some open questions about, you know, what's the bar and how do you ensure quality and what happens when people disagree? And if you have three different reviews by three different companies all saying different things, like who's the arbiter? 
Um, and I think we can work out all of those all of those issues going forward. Uh, but again, I think it's important to get something out. And I think this is a unique, um, like a unique offering that um, I think I, I, I think provides value. So thoughts. Well, this is a new one. Um, I like the idea. I, I have to admit, when you're saying how do you arbitrate, I you might find it easier just here's provide them all. Uh, I'd rather have three different ones who disagree than the zero, which is what I usually end up with. Yep. Um, but uh, I, I, I suspect that it's going to be all sorts of complications in terms of, you know, rev you know what gets accepted and so on. But I still think this, this is this is, I think, a good idea. Uh, I presume that would where would this live? <laughs> um, I would imagine this would be a separate repo on on ossf okay so i, I was imagining this is just you know right, right now it's in mine but I'll, I'll you know just remote it over and you know and, and push and, and we're and we're done um I, I do have some 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 text here on like you know what i was thinking about but um yeah and, i have a same question as david which is can this like really show up let's say in the package manager page like where sure. you are actually getting that package like if if it can show and i think dan can comment here too like we actually talk to different package manager folks like PyPy, so we could think of maybe integrating it somewhere like uh, because that's where people would be downloading the package right so Absolutely. um i dropped a link here into the chat too and there's a sort of similar effort um i'd say it's tangential not really the same thing i called c rev or crev um it was set up for rust but it's not really rust specific um it's the same idea but i, I they kind of tackled it from the completely different side instead of telling people what to review and sharing the reviews they kind of built this cryptographic data station mechanism for publishing the reviews and making sure that the people who you know, kind of security on those markdown files themselves so that you can actually check if Microsoft says that they did this review, that it was signed by some key from Microsoft kind of thing. So more like the technical aspects of sharing and trusting the reviews themselves rather than what goes into the review. Yeah, yeah, got it. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, I, and, and I think this their model can apply at like the file level and the package level and even like the individual PR level. Um, but. Yeah, I really think there's like kind of crowdsourcing these reviews is important and somebody should do it. Yeah. But, but you mentioned like PyPy or uh, it was, somebody mentioned like PyPy or NPM and so on. You know, if if we can eventually get this like metrics.opensf.org and it pulls in these reviews and then on PyPy you say, hey, you want to learn more about security? click here and it jumps to the uh, metrics open SSF.org page, which includes those reviews as well as metrics and so on. Yeah. Um, that would make that really yeah. easy to see or very easy. It would make it very, very easy to get that information. Yeah, I, I like that approach. I, I think it's, you know, ultimately it's again, because I, I like this idea or this scenario that I'm interested in is this gating scenario. So if I'm an organization, any organization, I happen to be Microsoft, but any organization, and I, I, it really would be convenient if there's just one location I can go to or one API I can use um, to, to get information about projects or packages or, or, or whatever. Yeah, so, so, so there's no reason why we couldn't be the so, so so the same way that and I was looking for the for the one of the package managers goes out to Sonotype looking for license info. Um, there's no reason why the package managers couldn't all be invited to uh, query us for the review content and then say, oh, there have been two reviews of this. Click here to go to the whatever to the page or whatever. yeah. It could yeah, I guess it could work both ways. Yeah. So they could query us and, and we could ask them to provide data to us as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it, in fact, uh, I, I think, the, you know, it, it'll be a lot easier to get people to join with this, the more the merrier where, you know, we, we pull in data and we provide links off to them. And if they pull in different data, 
um, that actually increases the likelihood they'll want to come here because, oh, this is where I can find the other information. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Um, I think this is also so. So one of the problems that we've had is well, not problems. Uh, sure, challenges, whatever. Um, it, it has been you know, given a pool of money, how do we how do we spend that pool efficiently to get good security work done? I think security reviews are one of those areas where we, we've been pretty successful in the past at contracting out, like, here's 100 NPM projects, here's what I want you to do for each of them, come back with, with the results. And it's been relatively easy to get to kind of make that, that kind of work done. So if we had the top thousand projects in each ecosystem, um, it's it wouldn't be be um, insane to think that we could get those all done in a relatively short amount of time, given some funding and and contractors and stuff. So it doesn't need to what, what, what I'm afraid of with this is that we we start out and it's the, you know, come to a party and bring food, but everybody thinks somebody else is bringing food and there's no food. So now, um, now we're talking about an overlap or an intersection with what's happening in the um, the securing critical projects. Yes, exactly. exactly. Yeah. Yep. yep. And maybe um, this is this is the output of some of that. You know, as some of these secure, so some of these critical projects are validated, that knowledge is then codified in a review that can then be. Uh, Michael, that idea does seem very nice, which is. Uh, reviewing a package by different companies. But then uh, when it comes to an open source platform like OpenSSF, uh, I think there might be an issue in verifying or trusting the party who's providing the review. Meaning how do we trust the reviewer? Yeah, that's where I, mm -hmm. I'd love to uh, get some folks from the Intoto project um, involved in this. So yeah. Um, so uh, I think that might become a challenge, but otherwise it does sound like a very nice idea because this is a very common and similar problem in LinkedIn, uh, which is people can claim that they are in, they were an employee of any company yeah. and there's no, there's no way of verifying. So yeah. it might turn out to be a similar problem here also. Yeah. I think well, that's I, the I, aspect the C-Rev or CREV project tried to tackle. Um, I think it, it's kind of like a chicken and egg thing where they tackled the technical aspects of how to figure out who did the review and stuff, but they didn't actually get anybody doing the reviews where Michael's approach is kind of coming the other way. And let's just get people doing reviews first, um, you know, bringing food to the dinner. Right. I, uh, and we there, can get better over time. I think there might be one way, which is uh, at least personally, I think it, it's, it looks very nice. So uh, something which, Let's encrypt it. So they do a DNS validation uh, for that special path, right? I mean, they have that DNS validation. They make a HTTP call to a path, and we should have the records ready. Uh, now, we already trust domains based on the certificates, the stat, et cetera, whatever is provided. So if it is being verified by a online, I mean, any company with an online presence, a DNS validation could be a solution saying, yes, this was provided by us. Oh yeah, yeah, I, 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 yeah. So 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 when somebody submits a pull request and says this is from, you know, you know, Microsoft. Mike at Microsoft.com, you're like, uh, is it really? So you email yeah. Mike at Microsoft and say, hey, did you submit this review? And I say, yep. And then you're then it's validated. Um, Correct. Yeah. That, 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 yes, I, I agree. It's something there. We we could also do like a, you know, it doesn't it it, it gets some sort of provisional status until somebody else like. Gives it a thumbs up too, and we right. could do all sorts of. I, I I was not referring to an email. I was referring to a DNS validation. I'm yeah, not I wonder if we can. Yeah, let's let's note that. And yeah. um, I'm I'm sorry to um to move us along, but I we have just a few minutes left, and I'm I I'm really excited about this project, and I would like to include it in our upcoming press release. <laughs> and and so that means we need to think about okay what needs to happen uh, you know ahead of including it in the press release. So um, I you know David asked about uh, you know where do we I, I, I think it would be great if there's something that 
that we're comfortable um, letting people see, and maybe we, you know, mark it clearly as alpha, um, but but we have an alpha site up, um, and we announce that in, in the press release. Is that um, Michael? You, we had exchanged email, mm -hmm. just a quick email over the holidays, and I think that's something that you were interested in as well. Um, thoughts from others, maybe David, on what we'd need to do. I, I know we'd need to think about, you know, what's the URL where we expose it. Um, if we do use metrics.opensf.org, I think it's very easy. Um, that's what um, I had a conversation with Lindsay earlier about that. Um, I think that'd be pretty easy to bring up. I also did get another um, uh, domain name th that we could use, which is the awesome uh, domain name. Anyway, so there's the question of location, but you know, maybe we should just kind of jot down what things we need to do ahead of um, to, to feel like it's ready to be in, um, included in a press release. Sorry, which piece were you talking about specifically, the dashboard or the markdown code review stuff? Uh, the dat oh, well, good, good question. Um, I guess I was thinking the dashboard first, but um, it, we actually, if Michael, if you were ready to contribute, mm -hmm. you know, I might want to wait on the code review until we, because there might be other, I don't, I mean, it's great that it'd be Microsoft providing something, but we might want to do it with a few other companies if we think there are there others that want to um, participate. So. Yeah, and, and to be honest, I, I this is the first time I've heard about this review stuff. I, I think this is fantastic promise, but I also think it's there's much that needs to be discussed that we're not going to have done by the 15th. Right. <laughs> so I, I, I think I, I think in some ways I don't want to use that shot for something that's still pretty early. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, let, let, I would say hold the powder on that one because that one's very much worth its own thing, and I would want uh, it to be a little more baked yeah. uh, before putting in a press release. Uh, that said, I am excited about it. Um, as far as the metrics goes, uh, I don't know what the I mean, you know, it, the bar is whatever we think it is for putting in a press release. Uh, Michael has officially uh, demonstrated it right to the working group. So as far as, as hey, yeah. <laughs> you know, you know, if, if you if you want to put in the press release that we've already demonstrated uh, the metrics, you know, yeah, we, we can check that box as of today. Uh, it would be awesome to have a website up that people would actually see the thing. <laughs> I, I honestly not sure public. you're ready by the fifteenth, but that's up to you, I guess. Um, so 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 the website itself is public. Um, what it needs, obviously, is a landing page and something to say, like, what what am I looking at um, right. and all of that. So what I would imagine is a page at OpenSSF, so metrics at OpenSSF.org, takes to a home page which says, hey, here, this is what the metrics project is. Click here to view the dashboard. And then, and then it goes to something like this. Um, and what we can do is we can also clean this up so that the only projects we have in there are things that we have like good complete ish data for. So we we kind of we we make sure that people's first uh first viewing of it is, you know, that they are wowed. Yeah, I, I I'm looking at the date. It's January six. I, I hate to over promise in a press release. I think it will be okay in a press release to say that you know we there we've had an early demonstration of the metrics dashboard uh, to allow people to see various data security data, and we're working on turning into a website and such like that. I I, I hate to try to press that in just a few days. I I, I don't. <laughs> My experience has been, uh, you know, those little details turn out to take more time than you expect. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, you're, I, I, I think your, uh, your hesitation is probably good there. So, um, damn the torpedoes. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I, I, the thing is, I think that we can put something in the press release, but yes. I, don't, I, I just don't. I'm a hesitant to. I, I would suggest wait. Hesitant to have the website. To have the right. It's the dashboard. website I'm hesitant about. Not telling right. people because you've got a dashboard. Right. right. You got it. <laughs> I mean, we can improve it. I, I think. Well, I. But I think that there's. Um, 
I think there's some metrics that should be replaced. I think there's some ch- changes, but gracious. Um, but I, I think that we could say something about you've demonstrated a uh, you know an early version, and we're going to turn it into a website, and then you know declare victory as far as a press release goes because people are interested in that. Will then know that that's coming. Yeah, and then we could link to you know. The, so what we could link to is the page that has more information about the project and how people can get involved. So if we got metrics.opensf.org. Uh, through a basic landing page there that said, you know, I don't know, enter your email address and we'll contact you when we launch or, you know, get a couple screenshots and I think it's coming soon. Um, then that, that we should definitely be able to do that. Quickly. We could do that. Yeah. Um, and then it's just, uh, just a matter of replacing that with, with the content and notifying people and, you know, what, so Kay, do you know when the next press release after January would, would be? In April. So Perfect. it's every quarter. Yeah. So so that, so then April would be a good time to announce the dashboard is now publicly available and we've worked out all the kinks. Uh, and if we could do the security reviews at the same time. Yeah, and, and I have to admit, I haven't seen many press releases in January that have a lot. Most people aren't doing a lot of work at the end of December to announce in January. So... Uh, I think you've done uh, quite a lot in a, quite a short time. So uh, I, I think delaying the, a lot of the goodies to April is just fine. Yeah. Yeah. So we can we can focus on just announcing the project and then we can say that it's been demonstrated. Uh, we can talk about the goals and um, and then, you know, here's how you can, you know, find out more or participate. So. Cool. Okay, so so let's let's make sure we don't lose the. Uh, we do need to get the domain. That's important. Yeah. Um, so well, we, we have opensf.org. So right, we just need the metrics. Yeah, we, we just, just need the page. That. Right. I don't know if it is important, but uh, if uh, we want to add uh, a user login or collect uh, user data like token and similar, uh, maybe we need to, uh, to be compliant to GDPR in, in, uh, in the European Union. So yeah, I do don't know. We need, do we need to collect email addresses right now? I'm not sure we need to. I don't to. think so. Yeah, yeah, if, just, if there's any, yeah, let's just not then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just a reminder. Right. Yeah, just, you know, frankly, a, 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 if you wanted to, creating a page with a couple links and saying what this is going to be about so that the search engines, particularly Google, discover it <laughs> and it starts getting links. Because my experience has been, you know, you, you spend a lot of do, work uh, creating something and then you spend the next couple of years trying to get people to hear about it. <laughs> so, uh, so, so having a page that you can get people to start linking to yeah. now and then working the content simultaneously it might not be a bad bad plan. Yeah. Um, Michael, let's let's talk offline, but we should just um, loop uh, Lindsay in. Yeah. Um, and um, she can help us get, get a page up and then we should get together the content that we want on the page and then also um, start reviewing that with um, we want to make sure that this is visible before we do it. We want to make sure it's visible to the TAC members and also to the governing board. So, um, but I, Lindsay and I can help uh, shepherd through that. Perfect. Okay. Sure. All right. Awesome. Um, f- final question for the security reviews. Um, Is there anybody else on this call that would like to be part of the core team of like making this real? And what I mean by that is like, cool, David, you're in. Um, I'll, I, I I would. <laughs> um, what was so? What what I what I need? I I think what our most important thing on uh, uh, like the 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 biggest rock that we need to get over is I need another large organization to commit to. I am going to do X number of reviews and contribute them or I have already done X and I will contribute them. Um, 
but it has to be the like who's who's actually bringing like soda to this party. Um, it, oh, LF hasn't done the hundreds and thousands, but mm-hmm. we've got a couple. If you, uh, I, I will, I will, I will take it. Um, yep. And uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna push on Dan and uh, uh, Kim to see if we can get Google to commit a couple or commit, you know, a lot. Uh, and uh, anybody else is is welcome as well. Cool. Anything else before we wrap up? Wonderful. Thank you all very much. Uh, Happy New Year and uh, looking forward to our next meeting on the, uh, wait, sorry, before I leave, uh, the next meeting is going to be like the 18th, I think. Uh, If that's super bad for anybody. um, Is that like Martin Luther King Day? I don't know if it's the day or the observed day um, because my kids have off from school on like the Friday and the Monday. So um, if it's a bad day, just ping me and we'll we'll reschedule, but otherwise I'll keep it on, keep it on. Awesome, thank you all very much. Have a good one. Bye. Bye, thank you. Thank you.